thank you so much, Ahmadullah, and thank you so much for organising the extended um, uh, Bengal History Week, which has been really, really exciting this year. Um, so today, it, so with great pleasure that we're welcoming uh, Riti Bashu, um, who is currently finishing off. You must be very near to submitting. I don't know if you've submitted yet. Um, uh, I'll be submitting in this December. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, submitting a PhD, which has got the same title as the as the talk which Riti will be giving today, um, The Life and Times of Foreign Soldiers in Bengal from 1942 to 1946. Um, so um, Riti is currently at JNU in Delhi. Um, that's where she's joining us from, which is, which is wonderful. Um, before this, she did a um, M. Phil, where she researched the Potua community in West Bengal, and you've published um, a couple of papers from that, which I'm sure are really interesting, and I would I'd love to to be able to read as well. So, um, Riti is going to talk for 50 minutes. Um, she's got some slides that she's going to share. Um, and then at the end of that, we'll, we'll have a discussion. Um, and I'm sure that there's going to be a lot to discuss. Um, so please, you can put your um, questions or comments in the chat, but we do want to have an, an open, open conversation afterwards as well. So please, please um, do save some of the questions for that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Riti. Thank you. Um, thank you, Georgie. Um, it's my pleasure. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, so this is also, as uh, Georgie mentioned, this is also the title of my uh, PhD. So I'll start the paper with uh, my the story of my uh, one of the stories of my grandmother. My grandmother uh, Pratima Pratima Rani was 11 years old when India witnessed the Second World War. One afternoon, she went to see an exhibition with her brother at Chorungi, a place in uh, central Calcutta. She vividly remembered the red-faced American soldiers who th 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 uh, uh, are throwing chocolates at her. At her. These soldiers were marching on the streets. This scene was quite common during wartime Calcutta. And you can see this is a, uh, abstract. This is a portion from uh, uh, paper, uh, an article published in um, Calcutta Municipal Gazette. And it says that how many soldiers were there. And in some case, cases, the black soldiers are referred as Negroes. And uh, so this is the scenario in Calcutta. So as the title of the presentation suggests, I'll be talking about the lives and times of the foreign soldiers who came to Bengal uh, during the Second World War. Uh, my archive is primarily based on the sources available on the Western part of Bengal because I couldn't access the archive in Bangladesh. So that sources are not so much, not uh, much in number. So uh, I'll start the paper. On 8th August, 1940, a statement was issued by the Governor General of India, which announced India's participation in the war and also offered that in region of India's cooperation, Britain will provide India with the dominion status. Britain sought help from US as well. But although the US President Roosevelt signed the Neutrality Act in 1939, he still agreed to sign the land lease program with Britain. In March 1941, India became part of the same program. India was used as a base by the USA to send war materials for China's defense. Initially, the threat on Eastern India was not much anticipated. Although the Chief Secretary of Bengal showed concern in mid-1940, the military did not pay heed. However, on 30th December 1940, Omrita Wajar Potrika, a Bengali Delhi, reported the appearance of a Nazi aircraft in the industrial suburb of Calcutta, and the threat became real. After Burma was captured by Japan in 1942, the Eastern Front of India became vulnerable. You can see the location of Burma here. So why the Calcutta or the Eastern Front, especially Chittagong, Calcutta, these places became vulnerable. 
As soon as Rangoon fails, Bengal is liable not only to air attack but to invasion. The British also feared that if Subhas Chandra Bose, with the help of the Japanese force, entered India from the eastern border, the locals of Bengal would welcome him with open arms. On 20th December 1942, Calcutta was bombed by the Japanese. So the fear that if Bose entered from Bengal, Bengali nationalists would support him became legit. From 1942, several war ordinances were prepared by Governor General of India. For example, the War Crisis uh, Ordinance for Factories and Goods, and other some other of, uh, ordinance. From 1942 onwards, Bengal experienced the effects of foreign military mobilization. A circular of Bengal government on 30th May 1942 explained people that troops are their friends and that they have nothing to fear from them. The circular assured that the people of people, uh, the people that the military personnel would be uh, sent along the interpreters, so it would be easier for the locals. <clears throat> While the locals were asked to remain at home during the military activities at night, soldiers were instructed not to interfere in local issues. From August 1943, the American supply program of China Bar Burma India Theater began to unfold, so that. The Americans used to call this China Burma Indian Theater. Later, it became India Burma Theater. China was separated; it was dealt separately. The main objective of the program were recapturing Burma, increasing supplies by air to China, as well as providing facilities to the Chinese ground force in India. The Calcutta boat became necessary in 1944 when one lakh twenty-four five. 24,533 Americans were disembarked here. These are the number of soldiers. There were, of course, um, Canadian soldiers, Australian soldiers. So these were the British soldiers were already there, and the increased number increased new innumerably during the war. And this is the number of American soldiers in 1944 and 1945. Commonwealth War Grave Record suggests that along with British British troops, there were units from Africa, Canada, and Australia. Australia. The records of Commonwealth cemeteries in Bangladesh, both Chittagong and Mainamati, have records of the casualties from the Second World War. The records mention the name of the foreign regiment stationed in the area. Apart from British regiments, Royal West African Frontier Force, South African Air Force, East African Engineers, Royal Canadian Air Force, Royal Australian Air Force, and Royal New Zealand Air Force were stationed. Chittagong of present-day Bangladesh was a base for the Air Force, naval and military. The Hindustan building at today's Chandni Chowk in Calcutta was the U.S. Army headquarters, and the Eastern Command of the British forces were controlled from Fort William. To regulate a considerable number of soldiers, also required the required policing. In Calcutta and Lindsay Street, the U.S. authority had an office for the military police. The Royal Police officer was at present-day S. N. Banerjee Road in Calcutta. The main work of this police force was to control the behavior of the soldiers in public. The nightlife was quite active at that time. Soldiers were frequent at Indian and European prostitute houses. So this is Ronald Allen Moore. He was a police, British police at Lal Bajar. So this is his. It is from his uh, son's memoir that he, how he remembered what his father told about Calcutta. <clears throat> Several acts and uh, regulations were introduced, especially for foreign soldiers, such as the Allied Forces Ordinance in October 1940. This is the ordinance, and these are the clauses. What does the foreign forces means? They have explained everything here. <clears throat> It talked about the extent of jurisdiction the British Indian government had over any member of the foreign forces stationed in India. The ordinance talked about the existence of certain foreign courts. In British India, these foreign courts were empowered by the British government to exercise legal proceedings against the member of Allied forces. There was specific procedure to be followed for the detention of any member of the foreign force. Similarly, for the U.S. forces, a separate ordinance was circulated: Allied Forces Ordinance, United States of America. It was named as. According to this, the British civil or criminal courts did not have jurisdiction over American forces stationed in India. The British India courts did not have the authority to call any U.S. personnel as a witness. However, the U.S. courts operating in India was given the power to 
summon the British or Indian forces and civil population. In 19, <clears throat> sorry, uh, during this is well, we are talking about 1944 and 45. It was of utmost importance for the British government to maintain a good relationship between the civilians and foreign soldiers of allied forces. Hence, in Bengal, the provincial government instructed regional newspapers not to publish news regarding the clashes between military personnel and civil population. Accordingly, a press conference was held on March 12, 1942. An appeal was made to the press to cooperate with the government in, in not having not publicity to reports of alleged misbehavior of, misbehavior of the armed forces. The editors were asked to report whatever information they received regarding the same. As a result of this ban, newspapers began to mention the foreign soldiers as either foreigners or special in Bengali, Vishesh Bekti, and in English is special man. They were not supposed to write foreign soldiers, American forces, or any other. <clears throat> the roles of Calcutta were very congested during that time. So the, in 1945, the British and American forces uh, established a system of traffic also. There's a video on YouTube. I somehow couldn't share that. So you can just go there and look at it. It's very interesting that how they are managing the roads because the military vehicles were very fast. So they needed the road to be clear. Airfields were established all over Bengal. Pandoveshwar, Kharagpur, Asansol, these are the places where airfields were installed. For the American force, specific airfields were built to land the larger planes. These planes needed a massive amount of fuel. Within, so this is the amount they required. This is the amount of fuel required for the uh, fuel. <clears throat> And you can see this is the pipeline. Uh, there's a pipeline was built for the specific reason that because the pipe well, pipeline was needed for this purpose. And this is the map of that pipeline. Kharagpur uh, became one of the towns to accommodate American soldiers in huge number. Okay, so sorry, this is, the, this is a picture from Young Magazine. It shows that the American soldiers are installing oil pipelines for fuel pipelines. Okay, so this is the Kharagpur building, uh, present day Kharagpur building. This is the Kharagpur IIT Museum building. It was the American military base. In 1940, the present day IIT campus museum building became the US military base. The forest covered plateau was used as a secret military base. In 1944, the 40, 46, uh, 8 bombard group arrived here. So you can see this is the structure preserved by the IIT authority, which says United States of America. And this is a hangar. The planes used to station here. They used to repair and maintain the uh, aircrafts. And the campus also had an, even now, had an abundance of land mat. These were used as a uh, Marsan mat, specifically to build runway. You can see these things in the, um, uh, in the uh, campus. <clears throat> uh, all over Bengal, several uh, camps uh, were installed. In Calcutta, Alipur was one of them. Mainly the central and the uh, south uh, part of Calcutta had military bases, American military bases. So with the coming of American soldiers, Hollywood films also came to Kolkata. Shoti Tre, in his memoir, wrote that the cinema halls of Calcutta were jam-packed with latest Hollywood films of the, uh, of the time. During this time, he first watched Hollywood movies. The entertainment section of the content of contemporary newspapers often mentioned names of various English films. Some of the military base, bases also had cinema halls inside the compound, like Fort William. Uh, so the... Uh, the the Piyar Doba camp, Piyar Doba was in Medhipur. Camp had two military, uh, two uh, cinema halls, Elbert Theatre and Old Theatre, specifically for the soldiers. And in those theatres, not only English movies, they showed Indian movies. For example, Kismet. Kismet was an Hindi movie. So they showed the, that movie as well. Uh, there was a club in Calcutta called 300 Club. I'll explain uh, about that club. That club had also had a... Uh, theater hall for the soldiers. The theater could accommodate, that particular theater could accommodate 3,000 soldiers. 
films from both America and England were screened there. <clears throat> the American authority, uh, this is Ajay, okay, this is the uh, map of Kanchrapara, another camp. Uh, you can see that uh, there is one theater hall here as well. This is the map of uh, America, this is American uh, camp in Kanchrapara, which is nearer to uh, Calcutta. So these are the newspaper and journals published for and or by the US military authority. Uh, Roundup was published by statesmen. This one was owned by British authority, uh, not military authority, but civil authority. Later, the round was, Roundup was continued as Chota Roundup from Calcutta, the Common Post, Tiger Rag. All these were American uh, newspapers uh, for American military unit, sometimes for civilians as well. For example, Phoenix. This magazine was published by the Allied forces. This work, this was used, and uh, you know, I found this from a civilian uh, collection. So it is very much uh, circulated among the public, and it looked like uh, USS Life and Time magazine. Uh, this is the cover of Phoenix. So you can see that format. This is the format, and there was another thing which is quite interesting. It is called Calcutta Key. It was published by the U.S. authority, and this booklet, this is a booklet, it had several information which the U.S., uh, the American soldiers needed in Calcutta. For example, how to behave with the public. What about the locals? They have categorized the locals. For example, Sikhs look, the people who are wearing turbans are Sikh. Or how to behave with women. They don't say Yahoo or something like that, don't offend that women, something like that, okay? And there were also information of local shops where they can find souvenirs. For recreational purposes, regularly, various sports tournaments were arranged for the foreign soldiers. During 1942, the American Air Force arranged a tennis championship. Uh, during 1945, in January, the American base section arranged boxing tournaments. This is a picture from that tournament. <clears throat> in the same year, April, another boxing tournament was organized at the Royal Calcutta Racecourse. The number of participants was 200. The, uh, the, the, the racecourse benefited 40,000 from the money paid by the uh, spectators, which were one lakh in number. That is what uh, the newspaper um, reported. Uh, probably during this time, uh, baseball was introduced in India, which is a debate, but because baseball was not so famous, because it was not famous among the British. So I think during this time, baseball was also introduced. And this is a picture from Alipur uh, station, in Alipur military base in Calcutta. All over India, clubs were specifically uh, opened for foreign soldiers. Uh, in September 1942, the statesman mentioned the opening of one such club as uh, in Pingshukia in Assam. The public was asked to provide books, uh, paper, games, etc. Et for the purpose. In 1945 at Jamshedpur, um, uh, located in present day Jharkhand, Tata Service Club was opened for the British and American uh, forces stationed there. The project was initiated by both military authorities and Tata Iron and Steel Company. The Cosmos Club, the Bara Club of Calcutta were used only by the American forces. Um, the US Army booklet mentioned all these clubs and the finest clubs to visit. For the American military, uh, uh, of the, the American military officials regularly used Bengal Club, Calcutta Club, Saturday Club, 300 Club. Uh, the 300 Club was, has a very interesting story. 300 Club was owned by a Russian man called Boris. Uh, Boris opened it with the help of an Indian Maharaja, J.C. Mahindra. It's a hybrid Indian-English club at uh, Theatre Road in present-day Calcutta. It was The name was taken from London's 400 club. It referred to the number of members. The number refers to the members. It means that only 400 members can be included. So the ex exclusive uh, should, be, should be there. Uh, <clears throat> By naming it 300, Boris was uh, that this club was supposed to be more exclusive than the 400 club of London. From the beginning, the club welcomed the British military officers. From 1942 onwards, it also became the hub of the US Army men of higher ranks, only higher ranks, mostly generals and colonels. 
Farpo was a famous restaurant of that time, which is Italian name Farpo, which thrived hugely due to the presence of these foreign soldiers. Even Bengal Club, which was known for its restricted membership, opened its gate for the American GIs. During 1943, they had to feed more than estimated military personnel. So in 1945, the club suspended new military membership. <clears throat> For the, uh, in 1939, for the entertainment of the troops, the Entertainment National Service Association, also known as ENSA, e -N -S -A, was established. ENSA came to India to entertain the troops stationed here. Following the tradition, in August 1942, BESA was established. BESA is Bengal Entertainment Service Association. The St. Xavier's College uh, in Calcutta was used as the theater for the association. The association's first performance was Beza Bazin. <clears throat> During Christmas, some of the military bases used to arrange entertainment so so uh, shows for the men. An RAF, uh, Royal Army, um, uh, uh, Royal Air Force, George Baker, shared his story of arranging a Christmas show, show in the year 1944 at a military base in Calcutta, in Bengal. His team had to arrange a temporary stage with the help of the local cinema contractor. He further remembered a band played, the singers and others performed. A radio mechanic of the British Air Force in Calcutta named Bartman Hooks, also a musician, along with his colleagues, formed a club called New Club Quarter. <clears throat> Grand Hotel used to have Jazz Night, the famous Grand Hotel, which is in uh, present day Esplanade in Calcutta. Especially for the soldiers, jazz musician Teddy Weatherford used to perform for the soldiers. In March 1943, advertisements came up in Statesman about the celebration of St. Nicholas Day at the Grand Hotel. The hotel arranged games dancing by Besa, Besa that uh, organization I mentioned. <clears throat> The advertisement also notified the first performance by the U.S. Army Swing Quarter called the Four Tones in Calcutta. At the end of the advertisement, there is something very interesting. It says, the presence of hostess for lonely soldiers. So from this kind of advertisement, it is clear that the clubs in Calcutta try to provide all kind of entertainment to the soldiers, starting from music, drinks to women. Most of the American GI station in Calcutta where India were in young. And because of their early military drafting, they could not complete their formal education. In that, that is why in early February 1944, there was an effort by the American officials of India to arrange some educational programs for their soldiers. The authorities wrote letters to the Calcutta University regarding this. And the university was asked to prepare examination uh, exam papers suitable for the American GS. But what if that happened, or I don't know what exactly happened because it was a news in the uh, in one of the in, uh, Bengali daily. The presence of foreign soldiers also impacted the local economy. These are the pictures that American of uh, by Clyde Wadley. The American soldiers are buying from the roadside vendors. So <clears throat> the presence of foreign soldiers also impacted the local economy. The soldiers were fascinated by the roadside shops. They used to buy souvenirs from there. However, uh, these economic transactions were not officially recorded. So we don't know what was the exact economic benefit. benefit um, how the, uh, so of course they were benefited the local uh, shops, but there is no record. As the soldiers came, uh, the locals needed to accommodate with their uh, accom accommodate their daily life accordingly. For example, one of the, uh, this is Sunil Sharkar. Uh, he, in his, this is from his uh, memoir. So he, as a young boy, he remembered that at the time I was in class 11, one day news came that the school is needed for the soldiers. Notice has already arrived. We were on the verge of crying. We have to leave our beautiful school building full of trees and the ground around it. Teachers are worried about how to find a new space for the school. So many beautiful childhood memo memories we had in our Devi Prashad school, and now we have to leave all behind. <clears throat> there were, uh, now, Shunil Sharkar has recorded very interesting, uh, mentioned some interesting stories. 
one is that he this is his observation of of bengal during that time that how the different kind of soldiers are there and what was the situation in every he further added an event and an interesting incident rather a daily uh, incident in his life that when uh, the locals of barakpur used to play with the foreign soldiers with the american soldiers they used to play football so barakpur's favorite sport was football there were many clubs and huge grounds among them the race course ground was the best just crossing that there was the most significant ground on the way to the cantonment their football match match used to uh, take place between the white soldiers and local clubs and fights between them were frequent with the bengalis there was a boxer called chilua the leader of milkmen and kala saheb a laundry man they used to play football with them chilua had a strong leg and was good with head with which he used to defeat the opponent frequently kala saheb's left leg was also strong if the leg gets the ball no one can stop him he never touched the ball with the right leg Among the Bengalis, Dulal Ghosh, Bole, Senti, Thani, Thani Nondi, in half back, and Gopal Shah, Shibu Pramanik, Abdul Sattar, they were all played for the Calcutta A Division. They used to have exciting matches. There were days when they used to have fights with the whites, and all other club members used to join as well. When the locals outnumbered the whites, they used to hide in jungle at the back of the barrack to throw uh, stones. sometimes with chilua's gang we the children used to join as well but no one ever crossed each other's line of defense by evening all used to all used to go back to their abodes so this kind of this is an example there is many um reference of this kind uh, there were a num number of rumors about the american troops one was this a newspaper from karachi uh, called sindh uh, weekly security report it it mentioned this particular rumor it carried some news about the coming of the us troops in india the police branch of calcutta labeled it as anti british propaganda it says a lack of us troops are coming to india for permanent occupation the american flag will be hoisted on this particular day british troops will be sent back to england the public welcome the americans as they have lots of cash spent money free the indian were not so happy with the sudden presence of foreign soldiers <clears throat> for the nationalist the presence of british soldiers in bengal was also a sign of atrocities infested by the colonial government one congress led nationalist weekly biplobi from mednipur reflected such opinion in april 23 1943 a report published on the weekly regarding the patrolling of british troops in mednipur it said soldiers were entering the village without any officials loitering like stray bulls all over the subdivision at all hours of the day and night during 1944 and 1945 the sick taxi drivers of calcutta were the violent targets of the american soldiers the drivers were not silent also after the death of one driver gurmukh singh on april 13 1944 a uh, meeting was organized by the sikh taxi drivers of calcutta in an average 500 taxi drivers attended the meeting called by the association at that meeting they showed a long pending this dissatisfaction towards the british government for supporting the american military officials the sikh drivers insisted on carrying the dead body of the taxi driver gurmukh singh in a process of procession from howra general hospital to bhavanipur for cremation they wanted the procession to go along the road in from front of the us state uh, states army united states army headquarters near chorungi they had a banner titled work of american murdered <clears throat> initially the police tried to convince them not to do so ultimately the calcutta bolly police could not stop them one of the police officers at the spot described the procession scene as a hindu satkal lorry on which the body of gurmukh singh was carried and 200 taxis and each carrying a number of sikhs another following another, another following of foot the total number reach about 2000 they were quite except that when passing some american soldiers in chorangi some shouted shame shame 
A deputation was held on April 14th where the Commissioner of Calcutta Police, Major Grisius of U.S. Army, and the members of Calcutta members of Calcutta Taxi Driver Association were present. From the deputation, it appeared that the behavior of the Americans towards the taxi drivers as as disgraceful. In defense, Major Grisius said, within court, the war disgraceful was unjustified in so far as it is applied to the U.S. soldiers in general. He hoped that this was not what the general public think of the Americans. In reply, the deputation assured him that they that only this incident are placing the American army in bad light. To please the American army authority, the government representative said within court, both they and the public had the highest respect for the American forces, and they wished to improve the relationship between the association. I mean, they mean the taxi driver association and American troops. U.S. Army had to assure the driver association that they had issued strict instruction to American troops regarding the same. The Calcutta police suggested, along with the local police in areas outside Calcutta, the cases should be reported to the Commissioner of Police and also to the American Provost Marshal. <clears throat> the association complained that there were many cases where American soldiers had taken the taxis to the outskirts of Calcutta and robbed the drivers. One of the members of the association also complained that even when they reported it to the U.S. camps, they paid no heed to the complaint of the drivers. In the same year, another taxi driver was also murdered by the American soldiers. The body of this dead, tri uh, dead driver was taken out in a procession as well, followed by about 90 taxis and a large number of drivers and owners. Both the Calcutta Taxi Driver Association with Sikh organization conducted separate meetings to discuss these matters. As the association meetings were held, police came to know about the influence of the Communist Party of India on the drivers. The first association meeting was presided by Muhammad Ismail, a member of the, the then Communist Party of India. Calcutta police were worried about his presence. The panic was not uncalled as Ismail talked about the victory and unity of workers. He warned them within court to be watchful of their enemy, the bureaucrats. Even during the funeral process that of the dead taxi uh, uh, driver on September 2nd, 1945, a bus driver carried red flags with a hammer and sickle. In April 1945, in a Sikh gathering at Jagat Sundar Gurdwara, Prem Singh Prem, a member of CPI, said within court, it is the habit of the... It is a habit of free nation to crush and kill their slaves, and that this and that this murder is an outstanding example. The resolution of the meetings were quite similar on the ground that they wanted a fair trial. In the first meeting, the taxi drivers wanted an assurance given by the American army officers and the commissioner of police. After the second incident, the taxi driver association became quite impatient. As one of the police officers wrote within court, this number coming after the acquittal of another American soldier for the murder of a taxi driver, Gurmuk Singh at Howrah. This time they wanted concrete results. Two resolutions were passed in the association meeting. First, they asked the police to search in, search in American army camps for soldiers carrying knife-like weapons and prohibit them from carrying this outside the camp. So there has been there, there are many incidents where these soldiers have carried this part, this kind of uh, knife and used them to assault the um, locals. Uh, it, mainly the lower class, uh, the rickshaw wala, the ghari wala. So that's why they are afraid of the knives. The six tax drivers showed no faith in the American justice system. Not only the uh, six type taxi drivers, the bus, the tram drivers, the rickshawalas were also joined in protest meetings. Due to the incident, two strikes were organized by the association within six months in 1944. So, of course, there were instances. So, this is a this is the a chart was the chart prepared by the police department of Chittagong, showing the total number of crime committed by the military personnel stationed over the district, including Indian soldiers. According to this chart, it's nothing. But if you look at the archive, you will realize that they are trying to not, you know, trying to not show the actual numbers. However, there were instances of clash. There were also instances or constant efforts 
from both sides to forge friendship. I mean, from the local and the soldiers. Ashok Mitra, an ICS officer, wrote uh, this during uh, in 1944 that most the, about the foreign soldiers and these soldiers used to come to the uh, meeting of the newly formed Calcutta Group and Art Forum. It is an art forum. The forum meeting used to take place at the house of famous Bengali artist Rothin Mitra in Calcutta. About the soldier Mitra wrote within quote, most of them were young. They had to leave college, university or teaching to join the army. They were not classes like the British soldiers. So you will see that this is an example. You will see that there are a lot of, uh, you know, example where the so locals are saying that British are snob and they are class conscious and Americans are not. He continued writing about a particular American army officer, Martin, uh, sorry, Martin Kirkman, who kept himself secluded. Kirkman was also a friend of the poet Devi Prashad Choudhury, and he helped him to translate English poems into Bengali, which later published as Modern Bengali Poems in 1945. Vishnu De, a poet of that time, had American soldiers' friend. He used to smoke the cigarettes brought only by the American GIs. <clears throat> this is an example of, uh, you know, one Bengali gunner, Robin Sen. He is talking about a British soldier he made and how they are described, uh, the, he describing the discussion they had. Painter Jamini Roy was one such Bengali artist who was Economy, he was benefited by the presence of American soldiers. Roy's grandson heard the stories of these soldiers from the family members. <clears throat> he remembered till 1939, uh, somehow uh, Roy had financial troubles because his paintings did not sell much. However, with the newly arrived uniformed men, he's mentioned uh, labeling them as uniformed men, they, they were a uh, lot of them were art lovers, as you can see that they used to attend Calcutta group and everything. <clears throat> they used to buy uh, paintings from Jamini Roy. So after leaving India, these American soldiers told fellow Americans about Jamini Roy's work. And this is how the Ford Foundation became a fan of the artist. The American soldiers used to write him letters in the later years as well. They used to tell them, tell him that how they had hanged their paintings in the drawing rooms and everything. <clears throat> the Calcutta uh, Jews community hugely appreciated the coming of the American soldiers because this community was very less in number. At the, in the, within the American and British soldiers, there were a lot of Jews. Uh, these Jewish soldiers, both American and British, used to attend uh, tea parties at uh, their houses. So this is a picture at Ezra Manson. Ezra Manson was David Ezra used to stay there, and his wife, uh, known as Lady Ezra, Lady Ezra used to arrange this kind of tea parties. So one of the uh, magazine Phoenix mentioned about this tea party, and this is from that uh, particular um, section. <clears throat> Lady Ezra was very Ezra, Ezra was very famous among. On every Wednesday, the couple used to arrange tea party at their mansion in Calcutta. They had different kind of, uh, kinds of animals, especially, especially a big turtle, riding of which was famous among the soldiers. They used to enjoy riding this turtle. After the tea, singing and dancing were quite common. This is a picture of uh, the first military wedding. They were uh, the Jews, women married a lot of um, British and American soldiers, and they were known as war brides. And after the war, they uh, left. Uh, they left the country, and it's, this is what uh, published in a newspaper: first military wedding. Uh, this is. Sally Solomon, a Jewish lady, a Jew lady, she remember uh, about the soldiers. Uh, the first change that struck me on my return to Calcutta after a year was to see the city filling up with servicemen from overseas. Large areas were requisitioned for requisitions for camps and bases, and khaki-clad men and women become a common sight. The uniformed men dotted in the streets were soon in and out of our homes, dating the girls, many of whom 
Om broke off existing alliance to make new ones with soldiers, sailors, and airmen who showered them with gifts and promises. There was an excitement in the air, filled with guilt and fear. The Sunday Statesman magazine had a column called "Soldiers' Corner." The Soldiers' Corner. <clears throat> this column uh, is to be uh, the columnist used to write this uh, column uh, with the pseudonym Bhai, B H A I Bhai. Bhai means brother. So the purpose uh, of the column was to, uh, you know, to familiarize the newly arrived foreign soldiers about the culture of India. and it indicated how there was a conscious effort to make bengal or india more hospitable to these soldiers the column also provided a platform for the soldiers to express their experience and opinion of india it says that our visitors from overseas find in in india much to charm them much to perplex them they probably want to know something of the sights and scenes they encounter in the village something about the people in whose um, meets they have found temporary home there is difficulty about language and na- how keep fit in a climate to which they are not accustomed the aim of the column was to within court to forge a new bond of friendship and understanding between indian and and the sailor soldiers airmen of the empire and, uh, and our allies now in this country <clears throat> so uh, the columnist used to frequently cite examples of friendship between uh, the soldiers and the public soldiers playing with school children or uh, you know they are forging relationship with the uh, lower class with uh, fruit seller these were quite common in this column to make india most welcoming to the soldiers this column the column represented the diversified nature of india In the second week of the column, the writer wrote about India's age-old tradition to welcome the people of different philosophy and religion. The author wrote within quote, "The process is continuing just as India welcomed new cultural movement and people in the past. So, is she ready to take in her new visitors? These foreign soldiers' interest in the Indians often led to the friendship between the two." in the second week of the soldiers corner a uh, british soldier wrote a letter on how he wanted to make wanted to forge friendship with the indians he further wrote that you know uh, before coming to india he had read about its people about religion uh, he believed in the vedic philosophy however unfortunately despite all this he could not make friends so the soldier wondered what went wrong in reply to that an indian offered his friendship to the soldier although as an indian he was aware of the snobbish nature of the britishers he was quite like the indian was quite um, happy to see that that this man is very humble and he wrote that i would very much like to meet a briton minus the traditional reserved of his race the same edition mentioned about the friendship between another uh, soldier and a retired civil servant and a fruit seller uh one soldier wrote about how the fruit seller saved him from a heavy downpour and his family also welcomed him to their house two soldiers were re- uh, written about arranging a fund to build a free school for the poor hospital for the sick or a public library and so on these two gunners uh, shared their experience with the people of an unknown village in india in most cases they they will not mention the place because of the security reasons they wrote that the despite their language warrior they were able to make a bond with the people and to commemorate their uh, relationship friendship they would like to propose the fun mentioned about one bengali boy uh, wrote a letter to the letter to bhai about his experience with a foreign soldier on a bus to the countryside the soldier was traveling to a village in bengal there he forged a bond with a family and so much so that the little girl of of the house call him mejda which is in english brother the soldier also considered the 8 year old as his cousin the column often mentioned that the uh, you know meeting of this kind of meetings there were indian students and the teacher the soldiers used to meet the students and the teachers often they had tea together the indian girls were quite good hostesses hostesses they arranged good food and entertainment for them the language was never a problem as in the indians were quite good at speaking english 
they even invited the soldiers even invited indian ladies to european shows while soldiers corner used to publish the details of the different festivals and art from uh, this from the region the foreign soldiers also showed their interest by sending letters to the letters to bhai generally during the time of a specific festival bhai explained the bhai mean the columnist explained the festival for the soldiers for example in october 1943 Bhai wrote about Bengali Durga Puja. Within court, Durga Puja generally held in the home of the rich, for it is not an inexpensive affair. But lately, community worship organized by residents of popular, particular local localities in town and cities has come into vogue. The column also used to publish instances of the experience of soldiers in the cultural festivals of the Indians. For example, two British soldiers joined an Indian Bharat, a wedding procession. and entertain the guests by singing popular english song songs one minute sorry soldiers corner often arranged the the foreign 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 uh, orange uh, encouraged foreign soldiers to enjoy life in the villages of india to know about the custom and people of the country sincerely in return the soldiers is to send letters and hope Uh, uh, and photos of the places they visited the phoenix magazine also used to uh, organize certain uh, this kind of publish this kind of reports uh, this kind of uh, news a picture narrative of the city chandanagar was published in phoenix this is a picture of darjeeling uh, phoenix had pictures of the members of the arm, armed forces doing touristy things uh, they often uh, published uh, they have to tell up explain their experiences in these places so here it is also in uh, you can see that how uh, the pictures of the local and everything uh, one the magazine had uh, photos of soldiers relaxing on the streets of darjeeling along with the natives one of the pieces compared the puri beach with miami in a photo few soldiers have seen sun bathing on the beach and the caption says despite the many counter attraction on on these guys getting a miami tan the soldiers were interested in the native form of art science and literature columns were written on the experience of soldiers with indian nature the birds seen in india were frequently cropped up in the columns soldiers corner published a report on the interest of foreign soldiers in sari according to the column saris are replacing stockings as christmas gift as stockings were expensive americans and english soldiers were sending sarees as gifts back home hi the column is explain what sari to the intendant reader the sari he says the sari pronounced sari with an accent, with a with the accent on the a is the national costume for the indian women it is simply a piece of material about 6 yards long and 45 inches wide which the wearer half wraps half half drapes around herself the column said that the silk merchants in india had sold a thousand sarees to the foreign soldiers in recent weeks the seller had also drawn diagrams to show the technique to wear it on customer sleeve a similar feature was also published in phoenix this is the a uh, picture in phoenix an indian singer from amritsar posted for, uh, for the phoenix magazine to show how to wrap a sari the phoenix magazine also had an article with photos of movie studio at at tollygunj in calcutta bimal roy uh, the director of the movie was shooting uh, was shooting a movie called udayar pathe about the studio the writer hedley stefford hedley stefford was an uh, was with the allied forces he wrote that within court of female beauty and acting talent there is no shortage in in an indian film studio however limited the limited resources in uh, limited the resources in other direction so i reflect so i reflected driving away from new theaters film studios biggest unit in calcutta section of the indian film industry Shepherd shared his experience of meeting the director the actors and also the process of shooting he observed that the significant difference between indian and british or american films was that within court here everything is on a more modest scale because the market is limited unquote 
he wrote about the details of the budget of the film, the salary of the actors, the extras, and so on. Because of the high cost, the director can only afford to use the bare minimum equipment. Theater artists and playwrights were also featured in Phoenix. Uh, this Phoenix mentioned about uh, about the uh, Calcutta's famous Star, Star Theater in uh, present day Hathi Bagan, which is in North Calcutta, where a play uh, on Tipu Sultan was performed. But whatever uh, we are looking at, it is very interesting that when I was looking at the archive in Imperial War Museum or the veteran uh, um, resources in the Library of Congress, and both have uh, the oral testimonies of American and British sources, it, 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 it's very interesting that the soldier's memory of India is very much dominated by the Orientalist idea. It is also because when they were here, Calcutta, Bengal was witnessing the famine, the 1943 famine. So maybe it was because of that, because the poverty, the dead bodies, these were very frequent in their narrative. <clears throat> For example, uh, one British narrated his experience during the famine. He recalled during the famine how they used to sit in the balcony of Farco eating dinner and within quote, people dying on the other side of the roads, thousands and thousands, unquote. He also remembered shooting the dead bodies floating in the hoodly. He recalled offering food to the starved. Within quote, um, we would offer them, the natives, Food, but they wouldn't take it, unquote. Some remember the poverty they had witnessed. For instance, David Neil Roberts recalled entering the Dam Dam, an area near the Calcutta airport. According to him, that area was most terribly poverty-stricken part of this, terrible poverty-stricken part of the city. People were living on the roads. One British private remembered picking up dead bodies from the staircase of an old museum in Calcutta. Visuals of dead bodies often appeared in the accounts. Another British seaman recalled cholera, which hit Calcutta in 1944. He said, 200 people died daily in Calcutta, in the streets dying. What I remember is most Indian people dying, in Cal dying of, Cal of uh, cholera. The country itself was peculiar to them. The British soldier talked about the strangers of the country, the strange country, the strange people. The American military man, Clarkson, was amazed by the population of Calcutta. He was shocked to see the way people lived in Bengal. Uh, Stilson, another American soldier, in his account mentioned about the beggars he saw on the railway tracks crying for bakshis, cigarette and chocolates. He further remembered, within quote, filth and dart of the Indian beggars are really astonishing, and it is surprising to see how people can live in such degradation in spite all I had. One Arnold Candy Essenger said that people asked for food in the streets of Calcutta. People are starving on the street. Eventually, they used to die and trucks used to pick them. Another GI, Lowell H. Russell, said in Calcutta, begging was an art. Children used to come to say, within quote, no papa, no mama, no sister, no brother, bucks is sharp. Unquote. He was surprised to see how these soldiers could speak in English. Joan Nelson Fishback of Women's Medical Corps remembered how people used to follow them in the streets of Calcutta, sights of women carrying a baby under a blanket, people dying of starvation and sleeping in the sidewalks. Farbit Busher, American Army personnel, wrote in his memoir, wrote in his memoir that uh, it is made by the dirty details of Calcutta. This is what he wrote. During the days of famine, he landed in Calcutta because of an accident in the way through. He lost his orders and other belongings. So he had to stay in the city for a while till his next order comes. He wrote, I was catching every dirty detail that Calcutta had. At the time, the country was in the midst of drought, illness prevailed. But still, everyone tried to get to Calcutta to bathe in the river of Ganges. Their key to heaven, many would end up in the street, and there they would die. It became the army chore every morning to gather dead, taking the bodies down to the river and burn their bodies on fire. This was sad and sickening, and I was catching the detail every day. 
unquote. One British account remembered Calcutta in 1942 as it stinks of curry, curry, perspiration. Your own body odor, odor really can't explain. You are ashamed of yourself because you stink, you could not get rid of it. So this is a picture. This, is, this picture says a lot. This is a picture by photographer John Pankratz. There were many um, reconnaissance photographers. They, in their idle time, they used to take pictures of Bengal. So you can see this lady is posing behind a burned funeral pyre. So you can see how they saw Bengal. Maybe they didn't realize the value of ritual on they didn't realize what was happening. So it was something very interesting for them. <clears throat> there were, of course, good references as well. As you can see that this is a poem written by a British uh, lands of corporal. So he's writing about his experience in India in 1943. There are other uh, American soldiers and British soldiers who explain, who uh, shared their experiences with uh, people like in, in libraries where they went and there were books and they were shocked and uh, to see uh, Tolstoy, the books by Tolstoy. So these references are also there. Uh, one of them uh, said that the members of the club, the club event were doctors and lawyers, the judges and the military people had separate establishment. They did not mix with the, these people. With the club members, he remembered having a conversation about nationalism and English literature. Paul, uh, Charles Hall, this is Charles Hall is uh, when, uh, talking about all this. Charles Hall called this group of people the local intelligentsia. He was amused by their interest in English literature in Byron and Shelley. In his opinion, the Indians staying in Komilla were quite friendly. So this kind of reference is quite frequent in uh, this uh, in uh, their memory. But also it is interesting to note that in most of the cases, these soldiers, soldiers were here for a uh, very short period. So their interactions were also, uh, they, they, they never thought of it as that they're going to stay here for a longer time. So they were never paid much heed to the actual, in actually understanding the people. Just one minute. Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> so for them, everything was quite interesting. The accounts were quite observant about the rituals of local, which was quite a shock to them. Uh, one lady uh, wrote, wrote about holy cows in the streets and burning huts. Burning huts were quite bizarre for them. One army nurse said in an interview, within court, people die on the streets, British trucks come around to pick up the bodies and dump them the bodies to the river and burning huts. You can see the part of bodies which were not burned. That was a shocker. Nobody explained to us what was going on. One of the exciting accounts of one American soldier was how he understood the caste system from the process of cremation. He said the bodies burned in rose woods were, high, were of high caste. At Komilla, one nurse remembered a religious procession. She described the scene as within court. There was the, there was the figure sitting in a covered raised compartment on the top of a cart pulled by men. On the ground were people throwing fruit and veg, vegetable up to the god, and on the cart were other throwing bits back down, uh, bits back down again. It was all very messy, but great fun. The sight of the river itself was quite peculiar to them. One soldier from Seattle wrote that, that was, it was quite an experience for me because the little kid from Seattle had never been a city, such a city as that, as this. And the river going up to Calcutta was something too. You know, there would be people washing one place, people relieving themselves another. There would be a body floating down the river. This kind of memory is also visible in the photos uh, as I showed that how they uh, remember. Now, another very interesting thing during this time was the relationship between the women and the soldiers. Because there were a number of uh, foreign soldiers, of course, there were interaction. interaction. And in this situation, 
this created a problem among the local men and i am mentioning them as bhadralok the cultured men and they used to often write about this things in the newspaper in magazines that what is happening so here is a quote from uh, shamshul hawks uh, autobiography so he is saying that whatever he learned about sexuality is from the foreign soldiers so that is quite interesting in um, january 1945 the statesman published a suicide note of a pregnant anglo indian lady she claimed the lady claimed that the unborn child was of an american soldier who refused to marry her then she is committing suicide this incident was widely debated upon the central legislative assembly the representative of the british government denied that incident and declared that this was a conspiracy against the soldiers of the of allied forces and attempt to defame them so this kind of discussion were very 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 common during this time <clears throat> so now uh, what is interesting is that i couldn't uh, because this is a very interesting section on women and sexuality uh, but unfortunately there is hardly anything about what the women themselves thought the archive is silent about it unlike in other war theaters in australia and britain you can see that the soldiers uh, the women are talking about how they were attracted to the soldiers in case of india or in bengal it is, it is rare my grandmother told me about american soldiers and in her, her opinion it was like that in in urban area the soldiers used to march as she mentioned in rural area they used to create problem why because the women they didn't have uh, the women uh, never wore blouses right only sari so apparently that made them target of american soldiers another uh, uh, lady called aloka indro she told me that uh, she used to stay in the north in north calcutta and she told me that she remember clearly there was a college called joypuria college and the women of that college used to have affairs with the american soldiers now she was only 13 years 13 year old during that time it's very uh, i don't think she remembered exactly it was also a public uh, her perception also the perception her family told uh, told her because uh, when i asked that did you ever interacted with an american soldier she said no no my father said never never ever interact with an american soldier they are not they are not good people and she remembered that the soldiers used to enter the prostitute quarter in um, sonagach so these kind of references are quite frequent in literature in bengali literature there are a lot of reference where the soldiers are talking about uh, the uh, Uh, the uh, the writers are talking about the soldiers and the the how the black especially the black soldiers are describing them as you know they kuch kuch kalo which means dark that because of their dark skin so this kind of racial stereotypical identities were also there so i end my uh, paper here because i think i have <laughs> uh, taken my i have exhausted my time so while there were differences between the treatment of british and american men by the locals there were also resemblance for many any any foreign uh, foreigner was a threat and for some it was only the american soldiers most of the black ones were uh, creating problems according to them while the taxi drivers were complaining the jews and the others were celebrating with them the war itself was a problem actually so i think it was more the because because of the war the famine and everything not exactly the soldiers so presence of the soldiers just es- escalated the problem uh, the chaos the locals had to accommodate themselves with the street uh, full of huge speedy military vehicles women body use was used as i mentioned uh, to counter the colonial state and to also set rules for moral policing newspaper editors were written to debate the relationship between foreign soldiers and local women while the conservatives criticized the interaction between the soldiers and the local women the jews women uh, expected to marry the soldiers because their family thought that this is the only way that they will be able getting out of the country and this is important photographic and other sources suggested that the women interacted with the soldiers in public gathering and this is something which is only available very uh, it's a very rare reference so we won't be able to see 
So in this paper, I tried to show that how Bengal and in some cases, the locals uh, reacted to the presence of foreign soldiers and also how the foreign soldiers remembered uh, Bengal. Thank you. Sorry for uh, taking the, I think I, sorry for uh, exhausting my time, sorry. Please, thank you. Thank you so much, Ruti. And please don't apologize because it really, really fascinating material. And I know you thought you might not have time to talk about some of the um, issues around local women and the relationships with the yes. soldiers, but you were able to, you know, include that. So, huh. that, you know, plenty of material for people to have discussions around. Yes. Um, from a from a British perspective, this is a history which is completely, you know, obliterated in any kind of curriculum that um, is in in schools and also mainly in universities as well. So it's very, um, very, very, in, you know, huge insights to be gained from the kind of almost skimming over that you've only been able to manage to do within the um, 45 minutes. Um, and I'm sure that you know the depth that you go into in the PhD would will be will be really um, useful source material as well. I was going to ask you directly a question about the perspectives of women, but you've answered that question <laughs> um, already too. So, so what I what I'd like to do now is to um, to ask um, for some questions. So I see. I'll, I'll just start off. I can't see any hands up, but if anybody does want to put a hand up um please do but let's let's start a, can you can you see the question at the side so from niaz um he's asking of the american troops how many were black and are there many diaries records of their experiences with either army segregation and or the locals uh, shall i answer yes please so uh, it is very difficult to exactly identify how many black soldiers were there. Even it is difficult to identify how many were exactly in Calcutta or Bengal because Bengal was the transition point. The war was happening in Burma. So they were going through Bengal. So it is very difficult, but that's why I don't have the numbers, sorry, the black uh, exact number of black soldiers. And there are many diaries and records of their experience with uh, either army or segregation. Yes, there are examples. But I am not looking at their experiences separately because that would be another way to look at my sources. So what I am trying to look at is how they were treated or they, how they were looked at by the locals. So those sources are mainly the literature and in memory because, because of their appearance, they were feared more than the white soldiers. So even in literature, and in memory, you will see that they are describing them as within Port Negro. So these references you can find. I am not exactly looking at uh, their refer how, how they remembered how, or how they were treated within the army. So my uh, experience and my uh, sources say that they were treated much more um, harshly because of their features. Feature. So this is something uh, very much visible in the literature and in the memoirs and oral testimonies. Yes. Niaz, did you want to ask anything else about that? No. Uh, no thank you. So I just want yeah, to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Um, I can't see any hands up. Does anybody, any other questions at the moment? No, Amadullah, have you got any? All right. Can you unmute? Shonak has got a question. Can you unmute, please? Thanks. Hello, and uh, thank you, Riti, for your fascinating presentation. Uh, this was a very interesting tale of um, soldiers in the 1940s in Bengal, and I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Uh, I had a question regarding uh, textual records and narratives uh, in the Bangla language itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, throughout your paper, you showed us some uh, fascinating uh, clips um, about uh, different aspects of how these uh, soldiers engaged uh, with the, the local population, how these soldiers uh, kind of uh, 
entrench themselves in the local spaces. And uh, you also told us about some oral narratives and the mentalities behind those. I was wondering if, I mean, because by this time, uh, I believe that uh, Bengali journals, the little magazines, potrikas, um, are, are pretty much in, in circulation. So are there any, or like, for example, uh, the ones that come out during the festival season. So mm. are there any examples of these narratives being recorded in the Bangla language, not particularly in any novel? I'm, I'm, I'm not talking of a large textual corpus, but, but, you know, little pieces, fragments and scraps here and there. I mean, I also know it's very difficult to chase down these records, but... What I'm asking is, is there evidence of that? I mean, did the, did the local population leave any trace of how they interacted with these people or, or, or what the dynamics of this engagement was? Thank you. Okay, so I'm answering. Uh, yes. Apart from Soldier's Corner, as I mentioned in the beginning of my paper, other newspapers or magazines, they were not, they were not supposed to openly discuss about soldiers. So that was the case. So even there were interaction, it is only available in memoirs. That's why it's only available in memoirs and fiction. Because fiction is, of course, it's a mirror of society, but not the exact incident. That's why. And yes, uh, in Soldier's Corner, there are a lot of references, like the soldiers are interacting uh, with the local population, how they are treating. Now, my, my argument is that soldiers, corner was also used as propaganda. That is the reason probably they were allowed to publish this materials. And there are no mention of any place. It is only Bengal. So you can see there are also some protocols. And in uh, interestingly, some novels, uh, some poems are on uh, the soldiers, which I haven't included here in my thesis, I have included, which mentioned about these things, like uh, they met a soldier or the women are walking, soldiers are whistling. So these things, things are there, but again, fiction or in poems, uh, in poems and novels, not in, in uh, because there was a strict, in, in, uh, in the file it says that one of the newspaper didn't abide the rule and they were banned. So that is there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I follow this up with another yeah. question? Would there be time for yes, that? Yes, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, so thank you, Riti. That's that's uh, really interesting to know that uh, there was also a curb on on the freedom of the press at that time, um, and not just the newspaper press, also journals. Uh, but I'm very uh, intrigued that you mention uh, fiction, especially mm. uh, novels and poems. And um, as much as I agree with you that these are um, not not exactly capturing what's happening, but but they kind of contain the ethos. There's a, there's a background to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, I'm what I'm trying to ask is, are you using fictional narratives as textual records in your for your dissertation or in your research? And if you're doing that, what's what's the methodology or you're you're applying to to do that? Thank you. Thank you for the questions. Very interesting question. Yes, I am lo looking at them. Again, I'm looking at the look at them, uh, the reflection of society, not the exact event, but these are important to understand how soldiers were stereotyped, speci specifically in case of women and soldiers. Because there are a lot of references where the women are, because those are not available in other sources, it says that how the uh, special there is a story called Juk Juk Jie by, uh, by Shamoresh Basu. It's talking about a military camp in Kollani. Kollani is a place near to Calcutta. And it says that there is a pimp. The pimp is narrating the story to the protagonist, Tridibet. So what is he saying? He's saying that you know it's very difficult to satisfy the sexual um, urge of the American soldiers. They only want women, women. And the women are saying that these American soldiers are like beasts. And there is this reference of bestiality as well. So you can see that these, these are not only fiction. So what I do as my method, I first explain that these are literature, these are published during these, this time. And because Jug Jug is published in 1980s, not in 1940s. So in literature also, we have to, need to understand that when it is published. The 1940s literature has different way because in 1940s, these are more direct and sometimes it's not so uh, poetic. 
in 1980s those description are more vivid and much more um, you know be- the languages are much more uh, beautified because they have to explain in a certain way so that is there so i generally i meant as a historian i need to understand that there's a difference between literature and archive i mean official archive or any other archive so i always try to balance that my supervisor indivar kamtegar is here so he has taught me all these things i hope i did just justice to her his training so i hope sorry indivar you were were you saying something you're on mute you're muted yes i no no i think it's 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 come across very in as very informative and you said even though I, i'm the supervisor but i found it uh, it's a compelling narrative as far as i'm concerned so i i'll just leave it at that because uh, we've been discussing this over the years and i must say the story the story has really unfolded as the research has progressed i should say though that um, and you know this i can put for discussion that this is actually a forgotten story in bengal's history because many people till i think riti took it up and it's a big story but till riti took it up this isn't the stuff which would be in the history syllabi of calcutta university even for the um, uh, even in the modern history papers Uh, am i right about that riti would you yes. so you know there there's a kind of conundrum or there's a puzzle there how can something so important completely uh, be completely wiped out of the history of the region where it occurred that that's But, really uh, something hmm. yes sir Please go i on. would definitely uh, say that yasmin khan and srinath mm-hmm. raghavan has they do did mention about this references but they haven't taken it uh, in um, they didn't look at uh, look, look at the whole picture rather they had looked at that this happened my thesis is more about the local nuances that is why i am intervening and i am contributing in the historiography i believe because their sources are mostly in, they are looking at english archive i am looking at bengali archive and the regional um, literature so that is i think my intervention yeah but you know my point and i'll just put this for discussion to you and the others that this is an essential part of the autobiography of a region you know so it's not i mean bengal history is very is a very developed subject mm-hmm. very highly developed subject and yet something which is so much a part of bengal's memory uh, or would have been a while ago hasn't received attention you know and i think it may be because the it doesn't fit neatly into the british colonial oppression story this is uh, there's much more of interaction rather than oppression in what you're talking about exactly and that's uh, so it doesn't fit into a standard the standard narrative but that's just a thought i'll mute myself uh, having said Riti, did you? Oh, I'll let um, Amadula buy if you yes, want. Yes. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, Shubhas Chandra Bose. All right. Mm. What I want to ask you, obviously, we we um, know quite a bit. You know, even in London, we watched uh, documentaries about him. Uh, one was called War of the Springing Tigers. You know, um, how he raised uh, um, an army from uh, captured Indian POWs. um what i want to ask you is uh, did uh did bengali people leave uh india to go and join you know subhash chandra sami and also did subhash chandra send people into bengal to try and stir up problems or target uh, were there any any uh like targeted actions against uh, british or american soldiers you know in calcutta or in any other parts of bengal um say inspired by subhash chandra bose um, thank you for the question i haven't come across any such instances but yes in the you can see japanese propaganda in bengal 
and you can see the counter propaganda in jugandha jugandha is a bengal daily and that how the japanese are not right but i haven't seen whatever ex what ex uh, you are asking uh, because i haven't came across any um, reference where this particularly against the allied forces or foreign soldiers mm. yeah I, i just oh right Pr pratichi you've got a question hi riti uh, congratulations hi. on this fascinating account and Thank i you. just have two uh factual questions or curiosity and that's very related to where i'm interested in and i think we have discussed on this a lot but two things just stood out for me and i'm just asking in case if you have more information on it one is that you talk about entertainment of the uh, american soldiers right hmm. i was wondering what kind of entertainment were they provided from these clubs was it like like you mentioned about dance and well hmm. there there you go and i'm like okay what kind of dance like who were what kind of entertainment uh did the american soldiers enjoy or they were provided for like as you said that sari was something that we mm. were really intrigued about so that's one and I'm, you may or may not have gone um, come across any of such uh, mentions but just just wondering second i think you mentioned about the war brides war bride right a little bit i uh this reminds me uh, i mean one of my colleague she's working on the us soldiers on the other front on the mm. japanese front in hawaii and how they are using the japanese american soldiers especially from the okinawan uh, descent to neutralize okinawan civilians and in that in that interaction like as uh, professor kamtika said it's not like oppression it becomes an interaction, interaction. because those soldiers start getting married to the uh, civilian the okinawan civilian women but the glitch is that when they wanted to get their war brides back to the us there was a law hmm. there was this anti asian uh, immigration law was there so after i think it's after 1947 or 50 i might not be correct on that front around uh, that time uh, The, um, the existing law was amended and then the asian brides were allowed but it was only for the asian brides the european mm. brides were fine i don't know i i mean so i was just wondering what had happened or like if any, any mention of that you had uh, come across so let me just clarify pratichi is a friend and colleague and she is working on dancers so she is always interested in dance and performance See, whenever we have discussion or work session, it's always about this: women, dance, gender, and this. So that is why your question is yes about entertainment. Um, as I told you about the jazz night, there are mention of dancers, but I believe these were women dancers very much because there is no photographic evidence, so I can't tell you. But it's my assumption. because if you are um, offering hostess for lonely soldiers so it must be women dancers so in that way i am assuming that this is the i can connect and of course there are references where um, red cross women used to go to the camp for entertainment now what kind of entertainments those were that is the question this can be sexual favor this can be this or this can be any kind of you know normal form of dancing and also but bisa or ensa they did have dancing troupe professional dancing troupe both were like men and men and women uh, were there so i spoke to someone and she is working on uh, the britain uh, british park she told me that she is she has also came across this kind of sources one is that about war brides in your case it is very much political in my case it is not why because this community is a small very small community in calcutta now they are just not there maybe they are vanishing so during this time it was they enjoyed the presence of the foreign soldiers because these foreign soldiers they they used to have certain kind of meat kosher meat and these soldier these families used to provide those meat even there is a story that there is a famous place in uh, calcutta uh, nouns it's a um, 
uh, Jew uh, bakery, and it is apparently after the American soldiers came, they started making brownies because the English were not familiar with brownies. These are stories because I haven't found this any archives, so I only take this as stories. And someday I might stumble upon something, and my life changes after that. But till that time, these are my stories. Yes. thank you no no this is fascinating i ah, yes we can we can continue from here <laughs> <laughs> yes thank you okay. um professor indiva you've got a question you put your hand up yeah look there's something uh, which riti you and since we have an audience which uh, today which may help you know you to reflect on uh, this comes from the remark about subhash bose Hmm. now you know the ina is not the, there are hardly any bengalis in the ina hmm. after all it's uh, it's remembered for the people who uh, i suppose defected and that's about one third of the people taken prisoners of war in southeast asia the majority of people are the uh, are from the resident communities many tamils and so on in southeast asia when you think of it the ina had virtually uh, had very little if any impact on bengal and certainly in the war subhash bose had very little now but he was a very large figure in the imagination now you contrast that that the bengal history will be full of subhash bose uh, and yet at this time he had very little impact on the other hand there were more than 100000 american soldiers around now how is it if you counterpose these two things that something's actually happening on the ground uh which is such a big story and in the history books that story is wiped out and a story which has actually very little impact on uh, the day to day functioning of bengal society uh, hogs the history writing space you know there's so that's something which uh, you might wish to react about and the others might also wish to come in on this um just now i thought of something uh, when i was interviewing uh, someone he was 12 to 15 years old during the war so i asked him that uh, there were so many because he was he used to stay in the southern part of calcutta and that part had a um, military base so i asked him that when the soldiers went back what did you feel because as a kid you used to look at them there was a uh, thing to look at he said something very interesting he said you know uh, this is a period of famine nationalism and everything is going on so my in my memory this has very little impact this is what he said because he was he said that you know when during the famine when people are dying on the street and one day he he, exp- he experienced something really bad and he said those things stayed with me i remember the american soldiers when you were asking i remember uh, the funny incidents but it was not something of a big change when they left so i think it maybe it is because of something like that Can I can I just ask um briefly because you referred right at the beginning to not being able to access any of the archives in Bangladesh and obviously you all, you re, you referred to Chittagong not really to anywhere else in 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 the East Bengal so um I just wondered if you had an idea about what may be available in those archives and if they if you had access to them whether they would be useful to you in answering any of these questions Uh, in my opinion because i accessed this i thoroughly uh, looked at the west bengal state archives which is the calcutta uh, archive in kolkata and also the museum police museum and the sources national library i think uh, what i can get in bangladesh is that some local uh, official records because most of the records of this time are in the uh, in the uh, calcutta uh, in the kolkata west uh, west bengal state archive in kolkata which is a section called war files so i think in bangladesh because i wrote to them but the things didn't materialize 
I think what I can find, for example, Mainamati, Chittagong, and other places. What if there are some references of interaction or some reports on the criminal activities or the maps? So I was wondering if I can find something like that. So for my you know, postdoc, I have decided that I will expand it a bit and also look through the uh, impact in India. Of course, I will focus on Bengal and see that how it is happening because. Um, uh, Professor Kamtekar only once uh, told me that uh, this in Delhi, the Sardarjang hospital was um, taken by the American forces. So I haven't uh, found all these resources. I want to do it in my future, in the future. So yes, that's the plan. Yeah, that, thank you. Uh, um, Amadula, you've got your hand up. Uh, going back to, um, you know, um, entertainment services for uh, foreign troops. Um, what I understand, you know, obviously, this is from uh, TV, you know, documentaries and so on, is that <clears throat> um, one of the reasons why Thailand, you know, became a destination for um, prostitution and uh, was because of the Vietnam War and the American soldiers, you know, being uh, stationed in Thailand or you know, visiting or servicing ships and uh, American ships coming, you know, <coughs> uh, with soldiers and so on. Um, now, you mentioned uh, that someone told you that a particular college girls were having affairs with American soldiers. And now, um, I don't know what, you know, Calcutta society was like at that time. How easy it would have been for a college girl to have relationship with American soldiers, right, at that time? And what would that involve? I mean... Uh, and also what kind of class background, you know, uh, those college girls, right? Um, you know, the lady who told you, uh, she also said that her parents wouldn't let her or her parents, um, you know, um, instructed her, you know, not to, not to do anything Thank like that, right? So how, how, um, how, how possible it would have been and what would have been the background of the girls and, and what kind of relation, because... In, in, a, in a traditional, say, Muslim or Hindu family background in the Bengal area, I think the girls that time would have had to go home quite early. Yeah. So how, how would that have worked? Uh, one thing is that um, Park Street, which is uh, in central Calcutta, it was the half for the American soldiers, foreign soldiers rather. So there, the Indians used to go. There were a lot of women in, in uh, autobiographies you can see. They were not seen, uh, they were not described in a good sense, of course. But as a woman, I would like to say that it was their choice to go there and whatever they want to mingle with the American soldiers. So the American uh, soldiers were very attractive. That is clear from the descriptions. Even if you look at the memoirs in Australia, in um, Britain, you will see that it is very much a uh, fact. So that's why I said na, that moral policing was a thing. It appeared as that this is the only time this thing in the illegitimate relationships are happening. And the men, the local men were mainly bothered about the upper class women. When they're discussing the prostitutes, they're trying to segregate from the segregate them from the society. But when they're discussing on women, they're saying respectable home, good families. So these discussions are frequently came up in editorials in magazines, in um, oral narratives, that what they shouldn't do this. They are leaving their husband. In 1942, Jugantu edition, one uh, news came up. It's saying that in Britain, American soldiers are there and women are having illegitimate relationships. We shouldn't let that thing happen here. In 1942, when American soldiers were not that much in number here. In 1945, naturally, with the suicide note I mentioned at the end, it become a thing. The suicide net is written by an Anglo-Indian woman, woman. But when it was written in the newspaper, the Bengali men are saying that this shouldn't happen to the Bengali society. The Bengali women shouldn't follow the footsteps uh, of the American uh, girls. And the American girls were referred as wild oats. Or, you know, the, you know, this kind of reference you can find. There are also, that you, said, you just, because you mentioned Hindu, I want to mention a particular speech by uh, Fajrul Haq, the then premier of Bengal. In a speech, he said that uh, 
women uh, the women of bengal muslim women of bengal starving women because of the famine they were taken to the american soldiers for pleasure by the chaudhuris these chaudhuris are hindus so they it is this has a communal communal tone as well biplobi another lang uh, bengali magazine is a congress back magazine it is talking about hindu women hindu ladies hindu india so this issue was taken up for different purposes to meet different needs so these things were there sometimes you blaming the war some people at some newspapers are taking the neutral stand because statesman wants to make a balance safer was the first one to publish a suicide note but never said a single thing about who is to be blamed but jugan tor star of india star of india was a pro muslim league newspaper at once these things definitely mention that azad was a um, muslim newspaper in the eid uh, uh, issue of azad there is a small section which says that with the black market came corrupt uh, corrupt uh, the, the corrupt society has been corrupted why because the women because the women were uh, sent to the soldiers respectable women they shouldn't go and there are instances where in chandonnang there was a magazine bengali magazine which said that in schools people are not discussing about literature they are talking about sexuality as i um, shared uh, sam shulhaq's uh, excerpt also so these things are there and the gesture because this gesture is something which is very frequent jig jug this words is very frequent so you can see in uh, several references not in official archive by the way the british official archive will never mention these things it's only in the um public or uh, memory or in public references now archive in the archive of li uh, literature and everything just one thing hmm. are there any examples of uh, you know foreign soldiers marrying indian women in calcutta or uh, in bengal only only jew women i haven't found any bang i tried to find actually because that would have been very interesting but i've never found including anglo indian women sorry uh including anglo indian women ha yeah, anglo indian women i was not looking at them particularly so i didn't uh, go there but yes there is instances where this reference that they married but with the jew of uh, jewish uh, women and also anglo indian women the question is what happened to their nationality because the soldiers were the american authority didn't allow marrying soldiers on uh, war theaters so it is unknown what happened to them thank you professor kamtika you've got your hand up is still and you're muted so sorry i should have fixed the hand down <laughs> that's my apologies okay <laughs> Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Can't see any other hands up. No. Ruthi, is there anything else that you would you would like to add that you feel that you haven't really had a chance to to cover? today so i wanted to uh, mention a few photographs which i couldn't because it was a, a bit different because those photographs were uh, as i mentioned a bit uh, about uh, the foreign soldiers took photos of bengal and that also says a lot of things like how they looked at bengal what kind of things they um, captured and it's very interesting that in those photos even no you will hardly find any uh, reference of or any visual representation of uh, upper class uh women or men it's only beggars only the poverty stricken part of india also it shows that because in case of women they were not allowed uh, after a point they are not allowed in the household and they were quite vivid about funeral process so there are a lot of um, pictures of uh, funerals and that is quite interesting because those were only object of uh, visual objects nothing there was no they didn't understand the ritual at all so those mm -hmm. things were there but that is something else so i didn't include it in the presentation but yeah that is part of my thesis larger thesis yes a very shocking photo that you heard of the white mm. the, the white woman in front of the funeral pot pie do you have any more information about that about 
Um, when it was when it was it was uh, in 1944 or 45 mm-hmm. i took this photo from uh, john pankratz uh, he is uh, george pankratz son he is a professor in usa he gave me the permission to use this photo and i wrote him wrote to him per- personally that this is a sensitive issue i want to use this photo uh, are you like giving me the permission is like okay you can go ahead with the uh, presentation so yes this photo is uh, this we don't know of the woman who is this woman is an unknown that's why i always mentioning unknown so we don't know but uh, she there's a hint of smile in her face that is what attracted me mm. it's a burnt funeral pyre as a hint of smile in her face so that is very interesting uh, the soldier was and there are other photos of the same soldier where he is taking a picture of the calcutta zoo and you can see that it is not not only the animals the locals are also the object the way he has clicked it it is also the locals not only the animals so these things are there this is very interesting mm. i thought i thought it was very interesting when you were referring to the context of the of the bengal famine and, mm. and that the that was what was going on all around um mm. i was also interested um in the communist trade unionist so because that sort of re- that that resonates with with people with similar politics mm. who were seafarers and um you know crossed crossed paths with with people with people across the empire um and i i'm just wondering you know whether in terms of the censorship that existed about whether you've been able to come across any other such um examples like that and what whether um you know ant- anti colonial solidarities were existing in 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 any way and if so did they avoid the archives so they you know what what where might any evidence of those be if they existed in uh, bplb there because it's a congress tax newspaper there are a, a lot of anti colonial sentiment but uh, one thing is very interesting that in case of american soldiers in case of taxi drivers yes they are looking at them and sometimes they are considering the british uh, empire as the uh, you know a paternal figure who is going to save them from the brutal you know the barbaric americans <laughs> it's interesting because mm-hmm. it's the other way around the communists not using whatever they are using against the uh, british person this is a bureaucracy the word bureaucracy is there and another thing is that in case of the locals the americans are not always the imperial power because the americans are much more friendly the british knew about india and about the culture and they knew their position in the society they always treated the indians at an a lower level but the americans didn't know knew and they didn't know so they always treated them in a friendly manner but sometimes boisterous manner but friendly they used to give them you know uh, even when the war ended there were a lot of uh, families had canned military uh, canned food okay the soldiers used to give away these things to their friends i told you about the um, the cigarette the pipe uh, cigarette the, these things were there so the sentiment against the british huh, yes there was there is one incident where the locals the nationalists uh, thought that the americans are british and they attacked the truck it is from a oral testimony though so the woman is saying that they thought it's british because the, there is always the reference of gora shoinu gora means white it doesn't matter it's american or british or australian so gora show you know when they are mentioning gora word they are sometimes referring american sometimes british but in my reading most of the cases they are against they are, if they identify because americans were visibly different because of their khaki mm. dress also so most of the time they were identified by the locals mm. were there any african regiments yes there the time and there was a story uh, that the Af- africans are cannibals mm. so these stories are there mm. a whole another aspect of your work yes uh, they are cannibals they will eat us 
and uh, there is one in, uh, instance where a kuli woman in a military installment she is saying that in ninth african soldiers came and the uh, her family not family her group of the people uh, she was staying with they complained to the military uh, department that this is happening so they were very rowdy especially, specifically the african soldiers because of their appearance they were feared more. so that is there yeah as i said you've got so much more material than you've been able to refer to here so so thank thank you so much i've just thank really you. It's it's five it's five two so we're going to have to finish quite soon. Um, before I do, is there anybody else who would who would like to ask a question? Um, if so, please raise your hand now or put something in the chat. No, I can't. I can't. I can't see anything. So I'd just like to say thank you so much, Riti, for a really fascinating presentation and discussion and everybody else who's participated and come along and ask questions um it's it's um it's been great um i'm just going to before saying goodbye i'm just going to hand back to amadullah um who may want to say something about future events thank you everybody thank you uh, well thank you uh georgie for sharing and uh Riti for this uh, really you know, uh, what can I say? It was so rich, you know, so informative and very well kind of presented, you know, really enjoyed. Um, you know, I had I had vague ideas, you know, right? Um, especially, you know, the war efforts in Cox's Bazaar. Uh, but, you know, the details that you provided, you know, entertainment, uh, sports, uh, and interaction, you know, they're, they're just so rich. Uh, obviously, we'll add to my, you know, bits and pieces of understanding, you know, uh, of, of, of what happened. Uh, and good luck, you know, with your submission you. in uh, December. So and then I uh, hope to call you doctor soon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And I'm sure your uh, supervisor will be very proud of the work you've done. Now, I hope so. um, 